We all know that drip irrigation is one of the most efficient ways of watering your plants. In today's episode, we answer some of the questions our viewers have asked in the three episodes of drip irrigation. Our first question comes from Becky and the question is that I have some plants in very large containers and some plants in smaller containers. How do I make sure that the plants get enough water? Now you can use a variety of emitters to limit the amount of water that's going into your container or to your plants. And by using a adjustable emitter like the ones you see here, you can actually control how much water goes around your plants. You can even use micro sprinklers like these which can emit a lot of water or even just trickle down a little bit of water as you see here. And for very large plants you can also use a combination of emitters like we are using the stream bubbler as well as a soaker hose here. The next question comes from Manohar and the question is whether I can use the riser kit on one spray head for the drip irrigation and leave the others for watering the lawn or should I cap them off? Well, you do need to cap off all the other emitters for your sprinklers, the other sprinkler lines. Just cap them off. You have to do this. You cannot just use some for your sprinklers and some for your drip irrigation because as you can see here, the drip irrigation line is actually pressure controlled and you need to make sure that everything else is capped off. Otherwise, the system will not work. Our next question comes from Manisha and the question is whether to use a backflow preventer to prevent the water from getting back into the system and also about the runoff at the end of the pipe. Now I definitely recommend that you use a backflow preventer. And as far as the runoff goes at the end of the line, you can see that I have this runoff at the end. I just open up the cap, let the water out and this creates a really nice flush system for my whole line. Now if you can't get to the main line, you can also use a quarter inch line and plug it with a goof plug. But I definitely recommend using a backflow preventer if you can and also having the runoff located in the main line instead of the quarter inch line. Our next question comes from T Abs and the question is whether I use a pressure regulator in the drip irrigation system. Now it's highly recommended that you do use a pressure regulator in your drip irrigation system. It just helps maintain and provide adequate pressure that's needed for the emitters. Now that being said, I have tested the system without using pressure regulators as well as you can see here and it does work. I don't see any problems with that. However, I definitely recommend that you use a pressure regulator and here you can see how the pressure regulator attaches to the main line and to the filter system. So here you can see the filter system. You can see that there's a lot of dirt and lime deposits in the filter system. So the filter system is definitely a must to filter out any debris or any other contaminants that might enter the water. And this is the pressure regulator that reduces the pressure coming out of your outlet and makes it just good enough for your drip irrigation system. So yes, it's very cheap to get a pressure regulator and I highly recommend that you use one in your system. Our next question comes from Sartsport S and the question is how many hours to enable the irrigation system and how many times a day? Now, depending on your emitter, for example, micro sprinklers spray a lot of water compared to something like the fan bubblers that you see here. Or if you're using the adjustable fan bubblers like you see here for containers, the answer might vary. But a general rule of thumb is to run your system for about 4 minutes for containers and about 7 minutes for in-ground or raised bed plants. And I also recommend that you do some trial and error. Just set a particular time and see how that goes. On hot sunny days you need to water your plants at least once a day and on cool days, cloudy days or winter days you can do every two to three times a week. Our next question comes from Francis and the question is to change to soaker hose for some larger pots for drip irrigation. And yes, 
Soaker hoses are very versatile drip emitters. As you can see here, you can change the size of the soaker hose to the size of your container or of your pots and they become a very versatile tool in your drip irrigation system. I have used all sizes of soaker hoses and as you can see here they do a great job and for larger plants you can even combine soaker hoses with other kinds of emitters to get more even watering and this works like a charm. Our next question comes from Dark Fals and the question or the statement is about the BER going away in tomatoes after using drip irrigation. And that is absolutely right. You can see here blossom and rot. This is caused by irregular watering and leaving the plant dry for a few days. Drip irrigation systems take care of this problem by constantly watering the plants on a regular basis. And a lot of my viewers have told me that problems like blossom and rot go away when using a good drip irrigation system. Our next question comes from Umar and the question is about the drip irrigation system getting blocked because of not installing the filter and also about the soaker hoses. Yes, a filter is definitely recommended in your drip irrigation system to block out any debris or dirt and soaker hoses are very good emitters. However, they do need cleaning once in a while maybe at least every year, where you take your soaker hoses, you clean them very thoroughly and then rinse them. I have provided a detailed video on how to do this for your soaker hoses in the maintenance section. And it's just generally easier to use new soaker hose tubing if you can, if you don't want to spend time in cleaning your soaker hoses. Our next question comes from Mark and the question is about various fittings for the main half line setup. Yes, we can go over that. There are different kinds of fittings that you can see. There's a T fitting, there's a coupler that connects different pipes. There's also an elbow that you can see here. Just make sure that you're buying all products from the same company because there are some slight differences between how these products fit. Here you can see a lot more of these fittings in action. You do not need glue to attach these. They just attach right away with your just using your bare hands. No glue needed. And similarly, there are fittings for the quarter inch line as well. You can see a barbed T here, some stakes that you can use to hold your drip irrigation lines. Here's a coupler that can connect the quarter inch line. So yes, uh, these are very easy to attach. All of these can be attached using the hands. The only tool you will really need is a hole punch to punch holes in your main line. And this is what it looks like. And it just makes it very easy to attach quarter inch tubing lines to your main line. And all you do is just take the punch and make a hole in your half inch line. As you can see here, this is another connector for the quarter inch tubing as you can see here this is the barbed connector which can be easily pushed into the main line or the quarter inch tubing line and then back into the main line as you can see here. So no glue is needed there are a very few tools needed for you to set up your drip irrigation line. Our final question comes from Esther and her question is whether you can find all the parts for the drip irrigation system in Lowe's or Home Depot. Yes, you can find almost all the parts at your local gardening stores. However, I have made a list of all the parts available in the video description and you can easily buy them from Amazon. They are a lot cheaper and you would be doing a great help to California gardening by buying these products or any other products for that matter from Amazon by clicking on these links. So there we have it folks. That was our episode on the Q&A for the drip irrigation system. You can watch these two videos to get more information on how to set up your drip irrigation systems. We'll see you again soon. Happy gardening.